This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, this is Naomi Minea. We are your hosts for what we think is gonna be a very interesting show. Today we're gonna to get a chance to look at something new and exciting on campus and talk to its creator. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at this week's upcoming events. Our first guest is a Hall of Fame graphic artist. In fact, she's the Hall of Fame graphic artist. In fact, she's the curator of the UCLA Hall of Fame on campus, right in the, Wooden, in the Morgan Center, right in the heart of campus. Her name is Emily Greer. And Emily, thanks for joining us on Bruin Talk. Thank you. A lot of people don't know that UCLA has a really great athletics Hall of Fame. It's right in the middle of campus. Yeah. Tell people how they can find you. Well, it's basically across from Ackerman Union and the John Wooden Center. It's the J.D. Morgan Center, and you just come on in. It kind of looks like you can't come in because it just says athletics. You think maybe only for athletes, but walk on in. It's free. You can come in, see all of our displays and everything we do. The displays are really incredible, covering the whole variety of UCLA sports. Yeah, we have every single sport has their own display, and basically... Try and keep them up to date, have the new schedules, new rosters, coach bios, pictures of the team members, and that's what I do a lot of the time, updating things, installing new things. There's always something new to see, so I think that's really exciting. Well, we talked about something brand new on campus, and mm -hmm. this is just great. It's been open since October. Yes. You know, the UCLA student section is called the Den, but you've really got the Den. You have John Wooden's Den yes. from his condo in Encino that has been transported piece by piece by piece and is now available for people to walk through and look at at the, at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, we actually did it and we took everything on one day, so that was a big deal. We went over to John Wooden's condo and I boxed everything up accordingly, labeled everything, like, so go back exactly, picture documented, like, to the T, extreme organization, so then we transplanted it back here in UCLA and recreated the building, basically built new walls and we have glass in the front and his window is also an area you can see into the den and just everything's exactly the way he had it. Now a lot of people uh, know about the story of John Wooden who lived in a condo the whole time, he didn't buy a big mansion. Right. Uh, Andy Hill, who was one of his former players, said that he was the richest man he ever knew even though he lived in a little condo. But 
that was his refuge, right. especially after his wife Nell died. I mean, that was where he spent all his time. Right. And you actually cataloged everything exactly piece by piece and put it back in the same spots in the new exhibit? Yeah. You can tell in the um, bookshelf area, it's just like I put all the books exactly how he had it, like stuffed things this way and that way. And there's like a little Tabasco sauce that I kept in there and just all his trinkets. And I mean, the thing I love about it is that he gives the same value to the plates that his grandchildren scribbled on and the little I love you mugs and like little things like that to the grand trophies he's won that, you know, only he and Mother Teresa won and, <laughs> you know, things that you're like, wait, this is really valuable and it's just covered in medals and little things and little dolls and, you know, just same value. It must have been really exciting to have the privilege to work on this project. Tell us a little bit about how you got your background in art and design. Well, I've always been very involved in the arts. Um, my mom's an art teacher, grew up doing art and went to college and was like, how can I make a career out of this? And started in graphic design, studied my last year in exhibition design, worked at the UC Davis Design Museum, and I was a gymnast and cheerleader and love sports and my friend told me about this job and I applied and I got it and it was just perfect and we've just grown since there and been doing projects ever since. You know it's often been said do something you love and you'll never have to work another day in your life uh, to, to, to be an athlete and then to get to work in sports in something that you also love. What a, what a great combination. Yeah it's, it's a great it's a great university to represent and I think anyone that knows me would describe me as a very spirited individual, so like I wore blue today. I like it. You know, <laughs> just ready, always. Tell us about what your duties are. I mean, obviously this project in putting together John Wooden's Den was a major. How long did it take you, by the way, to get everything put exactly right? Well, we started, I went over there August 23rd, and we opened October 23rd, so we were really working on it. Like, How did the idea come months. about? Um, it came through the athletic directors, the associate athletic directors, Ken Weiner and um, Bobby Fields. They basically, you know, they were good friends with Wooden, and I'm not really sure who thought of it first, but basically they came down to me and they said, hey, we're doing this. I said, okay. They came to me with these pictures that literally looked like Alice through the looking glass because the pictures were kind of taken sideways and like, all these things on the wall and trinkets everywhere and I was really like okay <laughs> but we did it we went over there managed it I think it's amazing and everyone should go see it I know you had great assistance also from Tony Spino who was a former Bruin athletic trainer and ended up uh, being John Wooden's caretaker in the mm -hmm. later years of his life uh, he, he cared a great deal about the man I'm sure he had a great deal of input in the project yeah he he had a very remote, emotional response, you know, just kind of came in and just stood there and looked at it and was in awe. And it's, it's a tear-jerking display, especially for anybody who knew him. Um, also, his grandson comes in a lot and sits and just told me that he imagines being with his grandpa when he's having a hard day, so. That's pretty legit. Yeah, it's a, it's a tear-jerker. In addition to that, Let's mm -hmm. talk about the Hall of Fame and, and some of the other exhibits that you have there. Okay. Um, I know there's a big Bruin football uniform. When you walk in, that's always cool to see the life-size uh, uniform display. Yes. We have basically every sport covered. We have an Olympic display, which you know maps out all the people that went to the Olympics from UCLA, which is always like a heavy hitter. Uh, we have a timeline, basically history of UCLA and kind of the world. and interesting things to look at. Every championship we win gets their own display. I love making those. And then we have the Hall of Champions, which has our 106 NCAA trophies displayed on the wall, hung in a really visually pleasing manner. I think that's the most awe-inspiring room we have. So. And what's your favorite part of your job out of all the things that you get to do? I love actually installing them, installing the displays. I love the championship ones, like I said. It's well, fun. Well, let's talk about those, because I've seen them, and they're great. But what goes into putting together a championship display? Well, first I have to track down the pictures from usually sports information or whoever's been at the event. And so 
I put together the pictures on the computer and arranged them visually pleasing way, you know, have the measurements of my displays, and then I try and track down all the objects from the coaches and various things. We made one for um, baseball, their second place, but that was a big deal because they haven't been there in quite a while. So I got a ton of stuff from John Savage and just hats and programs and Ken Weiner brought me back a little model of the stadium and it was like their last year in that stadium. So just got a, like a lot of memorabilia and arranged it nicely and had some AstroTurf and lit it up and next thing you know, we got a display. I have to tell you, I had the great pleasure of being the play-by-play -play announcer when women's water polo won nice. what turned out to be the 100th NCAA championship for UCLA, first school Big to 100. Deal. And you've got a nice first to 100 display of that, and that gives me chills when I look at it. Does it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was a big deal. I was privileged to be here when that happened, and it was a big deal. We had posters and banners everywhere. 100, 100, 100. I liked it. it was what, what hours are the, uh, is, this, is the Hall of Fame open? It's open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And then two hours before every basketball game, men's. Okay, so it's open on the weekends, which is great for people that are coming to Poly Pavilion. Yeah, come to the basketball game, come see the displays, come walk around the Hall of Fame. And have we should point out that it's not uh, part of the Poly renovation, so you don't have to no. uh, dodge things to get into it. You don't, it. you don't. Everything is intact, beautiful, clean. Nice restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, you, you were a gymnast. Uh, did you have a great concept of other sports wh while you were participating in gymnastics? Or is that something that developed later, just a, a picture of the entire panoply? Well, I did softball until I was like 13, and then I had to decide if I wanted to continue with gymnastics. But I was much better at gymnastics, so I went with that. Um, you know, my siblings have done like soccer and field hockey and things like that. I've always loved football. Basketball is a kicker, so I'm not good at basketball, though. I'm pretty good at most sports, just not basketball. Well, you went to Davis. Davis I did. actually just played, uh, they have a good women's team. They just played UCLA and lost last month. But uh, did you have much concept of the great success of UCLA while you were going to school up north? Yeah, I've always loved UCLA. I like to think that we both bleed blue and gold. Well, Emily, I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming in. It's been great talking to you, and I really Thanks encourage you. you all to go out and visit the Hall of Fame and the spectacular exhibit of John Wooden's Den. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And we'll come right back with more Bruin Talk after this public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions made here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at this week's Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Kellen Rowe of the men's soccer team as their student athlete of the week. Kellen was a team leader in guiding the Bruins to the NC2A quarterfinals and had a goal and assist in the final game of the season. He was also named Pac-10 Freshman of the Year and earned first team NSCAA honors. He finished the season ranked third in the Pac-10 in overall points and was named a first team All-Pac-10 honoree. Kellen was a starter for the under-20 national team in a recent match against Canada and contributed an assist for the win. Congratulations, Kellen, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Well, it's appropriate that we honor Kellen Rowe because we're going to talk about rowing in the next segment. We have one of the senior members of the UCLA rowing team, Rachel LaBella, with us and the coach, Amy Fuller Kearney. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Thanks for having us. Exciting time of year, isn't it? You're about to really get into the heart of your schedule. Yeah, this is uh, the time where we really sort of select um, boat lineups and do a lot of uh, challenging pieces for the girls to figure out who's got that fight and that feistiness to, to lead us through the season. Rachel, you're just coming back to campus after the holiday break. Yep. Were you working hard over the holidays? Yeah, training hard every day, getting ready for spring season. Uh, most of that training, I would imagine, isn't on the water when you're not in school. Right. We're, we were on the ergometer, which is a you know, landlocked machine. <laughs> it's tough, but uh, you've got to push through it. What, when you're training, you know, you're getting your muscles ready, but is it more fun working on the water than working in the weight, on the rowing machine? 
Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'd say so. There's a lot of components to the rowing machine that help us test their physiology and their fight. Um, it doesn't help us test their rowing prowess and their ability to move the boat. So you really have to have ability on the rowing machine. That's just the, the groundwork. Um, and if you have that, if you have that power and that fight, uh, that mental toughness, then we'll have a good chance in the spring of going, fa of going fast. So getting ready to get the spring season started, what is training like at this point in the season? We're, doing, we're still working a lot on our aerobic base, so we'll do a lot of long, low, steady state pieces, keeping the stroke rate low, getting the power per stroke, working on technique and length. Uh, but we'll start ramping up a little bit the intensity one to two times a week. We'll start working on the VO2 max and then also race pace work just to get the stroke rate going, get their heart rate up, and uh, get some lactic acid in that, in that body to try and uh, to, to fight against it. You've been training since October, but you have to make some decisions now about putting people in the boats. Have you got your lineup set, or is it something that's still up for grabs? Well, one of the great things about the team this year is we have more depth, I think, than ever in terms of power. We're also very young, very inexperienced, so people are still on an exponential growth curve in terms of learning to row and what expectation there is on the water every day. Um, so as a coach, this is the most in the dark I've been in January. I really can't say who would be in that top eight. I could probably pick three for sure right now. Um, and then there's still five seats and, and that trickles down because we need to not only have a top fast varsity eight, we need to fast second varsity and a fast varsity four. And of course the novice eight plays a huge ro role in, in how we perform next year. So it's, it's exciting. I mean, we're not exactly where I'd like to be technically, but we have more power and more depth than we've had before. Rachel, you're a four-time varsity crew member, so you've been there before. Yep. As you come into this new season, do you have a pretty good idea now what your coach is looking for? Yeah, I'd say I'd have a pretty good idea. Um, right now, we're just kind of trying to help the newer members of the team um, figure out what Amy wants, and so kind of like helping them, giving them some you know, technique tips. Speaking of helping the younger players, you're a senior and it's always important to be a leader for those younger members of a team. How are you a leader? Um, I always let everyone know that if they ever need anything, you know, feel free to come and ask me. Um, I try and be motivating on pieces, you know, try not to talk negatively. Always try and, you know, push everyone to reach their full potential. This is a sport that requires not only great endurance and strength, but great technique. Mm -hmm. How do you impart the necessary need for technique to some of those younger members of the squad? Um, I'm, sure they all, I'm sure they all worked hard to, to impress the coaches and have them come to UCLA with their power. Oh, definitely, yeah. But, but the technique is something more subtle, isn't it? Yeah, it, it also comes with you know, rowing under a new coach. It comes with time. Um, once you're in a boat with people who have rowed with Coach Fuller before, um, you can kind of like pick up on like the subtle differences. I mean, when I came in freshman year, I had a lot of work to do. I had to change a bunch of things in my stroke. So after four years, it's yeah. And it's like there. any sport. Like if you go out on a tennis court with somebody who knows how to play tennis, you you tend to play better than if you're out there with two novices. So when we can get the experienced kids in a boat and get the boat moving and feeling like we want it to feel, it's easier to grab onto that. Um, and so that's what some of the people, we have four people back from our ninth place, ninth place varsity eight last year. And when we do get in final lineups and we put those people together with experience, it's gonna help people understand the feeling and also just the expectation, the expectation of how we paddle, how we carry the boat, how we carry ourselves on and off the water. Um, and again, like Rachel said, I think she hit it on the head. Some of it just comes with time and experience. There is some value in that. So that's one of our obstacles this year. But we have, like I said, a smart, enthusiastic group uh, that are really working hard. Coach, we've spoken with you in the past about the challenges of getting a new program up and running. Now in your 10th year, you went to the NCAA championships last year for the first time. Tell us the personal satisfaction you feel about where the program's come. Well, I mean, last year was our first time there as a team. We'd been there three other times um, as an at-large eight, but last year certainly felt like we had crossed a hurdle. And um, it, I think the biggest impact it had was in the athletes because now they'd been to the show. You know, they'd seen what it was about, they saw the other athletes from all the top schools in the country, and not only that, they raced with them. They raced with them down the course and they could hold their own against um, some 
annual powerhouses. And so that was exciting and it gave them something to fight for and something to work for and something to look forward to this year. And they had a better idea rather than me just saying, we want to get to the NCAAs. Now they know, hey, they want to get there. They want to get there more than I want to get, well, not more, but as much <laughs> as I want to get there now. So I think that was the biggest impact it had. And I'm hoping that that energy and enthusiasm just carries over and we can get there every year. I see you nodding your head up and down, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the pride you feel racing for UCLA. Um, it was an amazing experience, especially at NCAAs, just to be surrounded by, you know, all the top crews in the whole country. And I'm definitely, like, hungry to go back, get, you know, grand final this year, even better than we did last year. How do you pass on that energy to those that didn't get to be there last year, and how do you think it'll help you this year? Um, well, it's kind of hard to think about. It's just, like, this feeling that you get when you're there and it's like such a big experience so it's kind of hard to like tell them what but um, I don't know you just like I think that more if empowerment when it comes from girls on the team it's not coming from the coaches you know when the leaders on the team are saying this is worth working for every day this is worth it that at, carries a lot of weight especially with the young the young athletes and you know with with all the stuff that we have all the you know we show videos of it and now that we have a first-hand experience of it and we're in the video there's a lot of ways that it can carry over to the younger athletes but again until they get there they don't know exactly what they're fighting for but it's the same in any sport um, but just having that core group of athletes that's super motivated and really wants to not only get there but get Bruins where we should be um, it's it's exciting we've had a lot of rain in Southern California yeah. uh, how does that affect your training do, do, do you guys practice on the water when it's raining? Yeah, there's uh, wind and fog and lightning keep us off the water. Uh, rain does not keep us off the water. Um, if it did, schools like University of Washington wouldn't be good, so good at rowing. Um, but it's not, you know, it doesn't always make for the best water conditions. Down in the marina, our race course, which is on Malona Creek, tends to be closed after 24 hours after rain. Luckily, most of the rain this year fell so far in December, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed that we have um, you know, we don't, it's not that we don't want rain, we do. It's good for the, the state, but we certainly prefer it to fall at the right times. <laughs> Rachel, you're a marine biology major, which is an interesting choice for somebody who spends so much time on the water. <laughs> Did, what, what, was your interest in that field spurred by the fact that you do spend so much time in the boat? A little bit. Um, I've always been interested in like marine life and conservation, and I was a swimmer back in high school, so I've always been surrounded by water. But yeah, it definitely has a part in it. Tell us how you decided to make the commitment to come to UCLA. Um, well, originally I was looking at schools that had a good rowing team and also a good marine biology major. And rowing seemed the best fit, especially when I came to visit. I loved it. What are you looking forward to the most as this is going to be your senior year and your last year with the team? Um, I just really want to make this the best season I've ever had and the team has ever had. And I really want to make grand finals at NCAAs. And really want to make it the best experience for you know, all my teammates. And she's doing the necessary legwork because she's come in more fit than ever. She stroked her first race at, at, that we won at uh, Newport Autumn Rowing Festival this fall. Um, so when somebody talks, you know, a lot of times there's, there's rhetoric about it, wanting to be the best and wanting to win a championship. I, I feel like Rachel's done the legwork and she's, you know, she's walking the walk too. So it's exciting because that's, without doing that work and that preparation, you can't reach those goals. Rachel, it may be too early to look back, but as you look back so far in your career, what, what's the most memorable experience you've had as a student at UCLA and as a rower at UCLA? Well, going back to NCAAs, I definitely think that was my most memorable experience. It's just like we've been fighting for it for my freshman and sophomore year. You know, we didn't make it, and then finally last year we did. It was just an amazing experience. Now, you're on the water a lot, and you're in the rowing machine a lot, and you're doing the technique work a lot, but when you actually get there to the start of the race, especially in Cedar Blaze. What, mm -hmm. What's going through your mind right before that gun goes off? There's nothing like it. There's, there's a countdown usually, and they'll say, go. And it's just like everything is blank, and you have this like whole buildup because you've worked so hard for seven minutes of a race. And you kind of like forget about all of that, and you just like rely on your teammates, and you know they're there backing you up. And you kind of like look over and see your competition, and you're like, let's do this. Coach, you're an Olympian. You competed at the highest level. How hard is it for you to watch as opposed to being in the boat? It's brutal. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, that's the hardest part of coaching to me is 
I love every day. I love every day out there in the water and all the experiences I get to have with these amazing young women. But when I launch them on race day, it's not like any other sport. I don't get to make subs. I don't get to call timeouts. I mean, they leave 45 minutes before the race, and I see them cross the line the last 250 meters. And there's a lot of trust in that. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. Um, and I can't do any. I'm powerless, you know. And as a rower, if things aren't going well, then you just dig in a little deeper. You find another gear. And as a coach, you just sit there and hope that they dig in a little deeper and find another gear. Where are you physically during the race? I'm on the shore, so I'm. Are, on, you, are you traveling, tracking the, the uh, at, progress of the yeah, boat? Yeah, well, at our home course, I get to do that. It's, uh, we have one of the greatest courses in the country because you can ride the entire bike lane through the distance of the mile and a quarter race. So, but we're not allowed to actually coach. We can cheer, but it's against the rules to say, you know, lengthen out or start your sprint or give them any technical advice. The go Bruins is okay. Oh yeah, and I'm like the whole time go <laughs> Bruins. Uh, one time a referee stopped me because I was whistling and they said I was whistling in uh, cadence with the leg drive and I was like, well, no, I was just breathing. I'm not, I'm not coaching, I'm just, I've gotta yeah. do something. I've gotta, so, so yeah, I'm on the shore. And most races, most venues, I get to see about the last 500 meters, last quarter of the race from a distance and it's brutal. Now, do you, do you get tape of the, of the races so you can see the entire progress of the boat during the race? Not most races, mm -hmm. not most races. Uh, the ones at home, we, we tape, we record, and the ones certainly will we'll videotape the end of it. Um, you know, we videotape every day in practice. You know, our whole plan is when you're sitting on that line, to be, to, be, to be able to be your best on your worst day, to have done all the preparation, and to make sure that you have the confidence so that you can be in that zone where you're just now, like Rachel said, it's just sort of blanked out and you just rely on all the work you've done and on trusting your teammates and you just know the next thing to do. Um, so we use video much more on a day-to-day -day basis, but you know, watching the race video, it's not like other sports where we're going to scout out our, our opposition. There's nothing we can do about them. All we can do is prepare for us. Well, Rachel, drivers. she doesn't tape the races, so I hope things work out for you. But if not, you can always say a cat jumped in your way. Or <laughs> do you have a sense in the boat of, of, of how you're doing from the start, the, the absolute start of the race? Yeah, you can. You always have like a sense of where you are around you, and we have our coxswain who always calls uh, where we are during the race. But you can always feel, you know, if it's going to be a good race or not because of the rhythm. So. And then you always strive for the perfect rhythm. So. Well, we wish you the best of luck in your senior season. Thank you. And we hope that you come down and watch the UCLA rowers in the marina. You can follow on the bike path and watch the progress of the race. <laughs> yeah. Keep track of the rowing team on UCLABruins.com. It's been a great chat with you. It's flown by. Thank you very much for coming in, and we hope to see you Thank again you. soon. It's our pleasure. Thank you. We Thank hope you. to see you again soon. Until then, Naomi and I say so long. We'll see you next time on UCLA Bruin Talk.